government has released its latest budget. Finance Minister and Deputy Prime Minister Christian Freeland tabled her second budget earlier this afternoon. She said the time for immediate emergency COVID-19 spending is over and the focus is now on recovery and support for Canadians. Defence, housing and dental care are some of the big ticket items in today's budget. Over the next five years, $8 billion will be spent on defence, including $500 million going towards immediate aid in Ukraine. $10 billion will be spent on housing with special programs for both buyers and sellers. And $5.3 billion will go toward fully bringing in universal dental care. As expected, this is not a balanced budget, but Minister Freeland says her government is working to shrink the country's deficit one year at a time. She's predicting an overall deficit of $52.8 billion for 22-2023. That's half of what it was last year. Conservative Party interim leader Candace Bergen called the budget irresponsible and said her party will not be supporting it. For more, we've reached Raquel Dancho. She is a Conservative MP here in Winnipeg for Kildonan St. Paul Hi there. Hi, Marina. So first of all, let's talk about the overall spending in this budget. It allocates just over $31 billion in net new spending, spending over the next five years. That's a lot of money, but only a fraction of what's been tabled in previous budgets we've seen. So what does your party think of the overall budget this time around? I think we're concerned to see how much revenue has come in as, as a result of inflation. Canadians are paying more GST than ever before, so we're seeing that, of course, boost government coffers in real time. And, you know, Marina, this is really coming at a very critical time for Canadians. My constituents home in, in Winnipeg and East St. Paul and West St. Paul have been reaching out to me with concerns about the cost of groceries, the cost mm-hmm. to fill their cars, the cost to pay their home gas heating bill. It's uh, And there's no real relief in this budget whatsoever. I was flipping through the pages, trying to find something that would give me some relief for my constituents to say, look, costs are gonna go down, but there's absolutely nothing in here to indicate that that will be the case. Costs are going to continue to rise under this liberal budget that came out today. Now, defense is one of the biggest areas of spending with specific amounts, as I mentioned, they're allocated for aid to Ukraine. What do you think of that part of the budget? I was uh, particularly interested in the military area. Canadians are very keen to hear our military budget, what we're going to be doing for Ukraine, how we're going to ensure we're bolstering our home defenses, given the heightened threat from Russia. And unfortunately, we're seeing this government in the last six years has had a serious problem with procurement. They've underspent $10 billion in defense in the last four years. So they're not able to spend the money they've already budgeted for. And now, as you said, they're promising more uh, more military spending, but their problem is with procurement. So I was searching for a mention of money dedicated specifically to improving military procurement, mm-hmm. and there was not one mention of that. So all of this spending is for nothing if you can't get it out the door, which this government has historically struggled with significantly. So it did not give me any more ease to see that there was no nothing being taken seriously on the military procurement side. Those F-35 mm-hmm. jets, they weren't even mentioned in the budget. So what about housing? It's a huge issue across Canada, increasingly, too, becoming an issue here in Manitoba. Freeland and her government say they want to focus on creating a more affordable and more accessible market, especially for first-time home buyers. What do you think of their plan for that? The plan in the budget right now from the Liberals is just a continuation of their failed housing strategy that they've been going on for six years. As we've seen, home prices have effectively doubled, doubled in the six years that they've been in power, telling me that they're housing strategy is obviously a colossal failure, which is in particular a concern for my generation. The millennial generation is the first in history where half of us will likely never be able to buy a home, Mm -hmm. which has serious impacts on our retirement savings and Mm -hmm. our retirement plans. This is a great, great, great concern to anyone of my generation and any parents who have kids of my generation and frankly, all generations to come. So again, I was looking for relief for my generation here and there's just more of the same plan that's created a housing market that has effectively doubled the cost of homes in the last six years. So particularly concerned about that. So how would a conservative plan for housing look different than what we've seen the Liberals put out so far? We really need to focus on building supply. That means working with provinces and municipalities to ensure their zoning and their approach at the local level is tied to federal funding. That's something that we'd like to pursue. We'd like to see the government taking it very seriously. Their plan seems to focus a lot on Uh, government housing. But the reality is most people are wanting to buy their own home. And so this plan should have been focusing on incentivizing growth at the local level 
but it's just, again, more of the uh, failed same housing strategy we've seen for six years. We need to build more supply. We're bringing in uh, many, many people into our country. We're seeing growth in our country in terms of population. We have not kept up with building houses, and that's why they're getting so expensive. But at least that's one of the reasons. And so we wanted to see that address, but again, mm-hmm. it's just more of the same plan that's doubled the cost of housing in the last six years. I just have about 30 seconds left here, Raquel, but I just wanted to ask quickly, is there anything that you were expecting that you were hoping to see that you didn't see? Well, again, I, Conservatives have put forward concrete solutions to bring immediate relief to Canadians right now suffering in terms of their grocery bill, their fuel bill, their home heating bill. We called for uh, a pause on GST. We called for a pause on the carbon tax. Mm. But as you well know, April 1st, carbon tax went up again, which increases the cost of all of our fuel, which, of course, all of our groceries are shipped on big trucks from the coast. Mm -hmm. We need immediate relief on this. And those two initiatives would have done that would have helped the bottom line of all of the households of people that I represent, and the Liberals refused to implement them. So I was hoping for something like that, mm-hmm. and there was not a single thing to bring immediate relief to families and their household budgets. Raquel, thanks so much. Thank you very much. That's Raquel Dancho, Conservative MP for Kildonan.